The Nagaland civilian killings incident did not just raise questions about human rights violations, but also revived several demands, particularly to repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Act 1958 from the Northeast Indian states. Another crucial issue brought to the fore is the impact the incident might have on the ongoing Naga peace talks. What is the prime issue behind the Naga insurgency? What is the issue of Greater Naga Limb? What are the Naga peace talks about? To understand these issues better, I suggest you watch this video till the end. I am Rifa Deka and you are watching Decoded. The history of Naga nationalism finds its root in the same place as Indian nationalism, the British occupation of the region. The Naga Hills became a part of British India in 1881. During World War I, the British government recruited a number of labourers and porters from Naga tribes. As part of the labour corps, about 2,000 Nagas and many more from the northeast were sent to France, where, alienated from other British Indian troops, they developed a sense of unity. They agreed that after returning to their homeland, they will work towards unity and friendship among the various Naga tribes. These Nagas, under R.S. Rui Chamhau's leadership, came together with the British officials and formed the Naga Club in 1918. R.S. Rui Chamhau was one of the few who could speak English and translate to the fellow Nagas about the importance of forming the Naga Club. Over the next three decades, the club grew in strength and in 1946, the Naga National Council or the NNC was born. Under the leadership of Angami Zapu Fizo, the NNC declared Nagaland as an independent state on the 14th of August 1947. In May 1951, the NNC conducted a referendum to claim that 99.9% .9 of the Nagas supported a sovereign Nagaland. All this because Naga inhabited areas of the Northeast never considered themselves a part of British India. However, in the post independence scenario, the Indian interest in the region was far from over. This is where the story of the earliest insurgencies in the country begins. By 1952, Fizo had already formed an underground Naga federal government and a Naga federal army. With the situation turning violent, the Indian government decided to send in the army in 1955 and three years later, the country witnessed the birth of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act or AFSPA and it was also the beginning of a tumultuous relationship between the Nagas and the Indians. To know more about AFSPA, watch the previous episode of Decoded. Naga land, which was a part of the Assam province so far, was declared a separate state in 1963, carved out of the Naga Hills district of Assam and the then Northeast Frontier Agency, which is now Arunachal Pradesh. This is also when the Naga peace talks began and after several rounds of talks, the Shillong Accord was signed with underground groups of Naga land. But it was rejected by many top NNC leaders on the ground that it not address the issue of Naga sovereignty and force the Nagas to accept the Indian constitution. Subsequently, in 1981, Isaac Trishi Su, Twingalang Muiva and SS Khaplang split from the NNC and formed the NSCN to continue the armed struggle. In 1988, the NSCN split into NSCN IM and NSCN K after an internal violent clash. While the NSCN IM was led by Isaac and Muiva, the NSCN K was led by Khaplang. Over the next few years, the NNC began to fade away and Fizo died in London in 1991. The NSCN IM then came to be seen as the mother of all insurgencies in the region. The NSCN IM consists mainly of the Tangkhul tribe of Ukrul in Manipur, to which Moiva belongs, and the Sema tribe, most of whom came from Zuneboto district of Nagaland from which Isaac hailed. 
In 1997, the NSCN-IM entered into a ceasefire with the Indian government, which gave rise to hope for a final settlement. The key demand of Naga groups has been a greater Naga limb, a sovereign statehood that is redrawing of boundaries to bring all Naga inhabited areas to include various parts of Arunachal Pradesh, Manipur, Assam and Myanmar under one administrative umbrella. The demands also include a separate Naga Yazabo constitution and the Naga national flag. The Indian government and Naga insurgent groups in particular, the NSC and IM announced a ceasefire in 1997 with the aim to sign a Naga Peace Accord and since then there have been over 100 rounds of talks. In the most significant development in the peace talks in August 2015, the group signed a framework agreement with the Indian government for the Naga Peace Accord. RN Ravi was appointed an interlocutor to take the talks to their conclusion. But while both the government and Naga group said the talks successfully concluded on the government's deadline of October 31, 2019, no accord was signed. It remains unclear as to why the talks never resulted in a long-lasting solution, but anyone who watched Nagaland closely knew that the dual role of RN Ravi as Nagaland governor and chief interlocutor held no one. To claim that the relationship between RN Ravi and the NSCN was frosty would be an understatement of biblical proportions. Safe to say, the NSCN will not be wishing RN Ravi on his birthday. RN Ravi's departure was pretty much welcomed by the NSCN and some even saw this departure as a big victory for the insurgents. According to experts, Ravi realized that the NSCN IM and the Indian government differed in their understanding of the framework agreement. The NSCN had time and again insisted on a Naga constitution and was pushing for a greater Naga limb, stretching beyond the boundaries of the present Nagaland state. Many point to November 2017 as a watershed moment in the ongoing peace talks when RN Ravi signed an agreement with seven groups who had come together under the banner of the Naga National Political Groups NNPGs, excluding the NSC and IM. This move, of course, angered the IM, which considers itself the principal representative of Naga aspirations and a rival of many NNPG groups. In a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi in 2020, the IM accused Ravi of attempting to segregate the Naga civil society. In September 2021, shortly after he had been transferred from Nagaland to Tamil Nadu as governor, Ravi resigned from his position as the chief interlocutor too. The Indian government then brought in the former special director of the Intelligence Bureau, A.K. Mishra, for talks. In addition, Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma and Nagaland CM Nefu Rio also met Moiva and others. It is important to understand that Naga flags and constitution are not the only demands. There are other demands that are far from viable and easy to agree upon. A bicameral assembly with at least 40 nominated members representing different tribes, absorbing cadres of local armed forces in the Indian paramilitary, setting up of autonomous councils in Naga-dominated areas of neighbouring states like Manipur and the use of Naga flag for at least customary events. But the Oting massacre has thrown a spanner in the works. The last thing that the talks needed was the blood of innocence. The NSCN has termed the massacre as a dark day in the history of the Nagas. Calls for repealing AFSPA were never low in Nagaland, but now they are louder than ever. This will only help the NSCN, who have time and again pointed out the draconian nature of the act. Amid all this, when will the issue find a solution? Only time will tell. For now, though, everyone's attention remains on Oting and whether the people of Nagaland will ever get the justice they deserve. If not, there is a strong chance the Naga peace talks may soon become a story of missed opportunities. Don't forget.
forget to like, share, and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.